Today we want to talk about how number formatting works and how it can be used in a data table. And the reason I say specifically number formatting is because generally I, I won't do any character formatting until later on in my form when I see exactly how the user wants it presented to them. So I've got basically three numbers. Uh, the number here, which can be a number or large number, a date time or date time extended, and a currency. Those three numbers are able to be formatted. Auto number, of course, is not, and all these others are, are objects or calculations or things like that. So what I will do is I'll show you in number. Now, down here, the first thing to do is make sure you get the right kind of number. For example, you don't want to try to tell an, an integer that it has 10 decimal places because you're not going to see those because an integer doesn't even hold the decimal places. Um, if you want decimal places be beyond, beyond the decimal point to the right, you need to choose either single or double. Then you can come down here to format and you can then choose a general format, which will just give you numbers on the left side of the decimal, numbers on the right side of the decimal, and that's it. That's all you'll get. And so then you can choose a currency, which is kind of odd because they've got a currency data type as well as a currency format for a regular number. I tend to choose the data type over the format of currency, but that can be that can be either way, depending on how you want to do it. You get to the same destination, put it that way. You can choose a euro currency here or a fixed decimal point. In other words, if you choose this, you won't get the commas, but you'll get precision beyond the decimal place where you can choose the numbers of decimals. There have been times in my programming where I've struggled to get it to give me exactly the number of places beyond the decimal that I wanted to have. And the solution has been to go to fixed, where I can tell it I want exactly three decimal places, or I want exactly five, or whatever uh, it is that I want. Now you have the standard format, which gives you the commas and the decimal point and the things to the right. Now you also have a percent. Percent gives me a, a shift of the decimal place and then puts the percent sign. So if I write 0 0.01, that's actually 1%. It's 1 one hundredth, okay? Because a percent is the division of how many over 100. So if I have 1 one hundredth of a dollar, for example, I've got 1% of a dollar. So that's how the percentages work. And if I choose percent for my number format, when I when it shows up, I'm going to have to be aware of that as I put data into that field. And then I have scientific notation here too, which will allow me to have many more decimal place precision um, and use the 10 to the third or fourth or fifth power to represent uh, the number of decimal places. Okay, so that's the number. Now you come down here to currency and you get a very similar sort of format. And I'm, I'm skipping over date time. I'll come right back to that. So format here, you've got the general currency, which basically puts you back to number format. And then you have the regular currency here format for currency. You have Euro and then you have fixed standard percent scientific. Now, what this leads me to believe is that currency really is a number. Uh, but if I choose currency up here, I'll get two decimal places and I'll get a, a currency symbol in front of the dollar, um, in front of the number to the left. Choosing this down here allows me to be very specific. If I choose currency also down here, it gives me a dollar sign plus a number, gives me the commas if it goes over a thousand, and gives me two decimal places to the right. Okay. Now, I'm going to come down here now to date time because date time has a lot of different interesting formats. Your general date, and you're kind of getting the theme here, every one of them has a general something. The general date has all the data for it. It has the day, the, day, the month, the day, the year, the hour, the minute, and the seconds, and then AM or PM, whether it's you know before noon or afternoon, okay? So, you have a, a general date that gives you pretty much everything. You have a long date, which gives you the day spelled out, the month spelled out, and then the day and the year. You have a medium date, which just gives you month, and uh, the day of the month spelled out, and then the year. Short date, 
which gives, gives you the numbers with slashes. And then you repeat that process. You have a long time, medium time, and short time. Okay. So a long time, of course, gives it down to the seconds. The medium time gives you down to the minutes with an AM, PM on both of those. And then a short time is really military time. So if you're in the afternoon, it'll give you 13, 14, 15, etc., up till 23. And then it reverts to the next day, you know, 12 something, which is the next day. Okay. So those are your date formats. Now, Generally, if I want something a little bit different than the what, what they've given me here, like let's say it, I have wanted a format that's similar to what I can do in Excel where I have just the day and the month, I can come up here and I can say, okay, instead of giving me a format that's canned, I can just say I want day, day, month, month, month. Okay. Now, if I use three M's for the month, it'll give me the three character abbreviation for the month. And of course, day, day, will give me the full day. Okay. And I could even shorten this to day and then three characters for the month. Or I could put day slash and then month like that. And it'll give me a day and a single character if it's one through nine. And then a month in a single character for it's one through nine. Now, if it goes to the 11th month or the 11th day and to the end of the month, it'll, of course, give me the two digits. And I can create a, a custom format for, for my date in that way. And there's a lot of other custom formats you can play with. You just have to Google all of the different format characters that you can use to make your text uppercase and lowercase and do all kinds of crazy things. Now, generally, I'll tend to format my text in a form and my numbers in the tables. That's just a general rule of thumb that I follow. You can see what works for you. In any case, if you like what you see here, please hit the subscribe button and help me grow the channel. And I uh, hope to see you again next time. Thanks.